All right, we are ready to get started. Once again, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us today and for taking the time to attend today's webinar, Five Reasons to Travel to Torres of Biden. My name is Anna Camera. I'm based in Buenos Aires, Argentina, but I work for Enlarging Destinations, a sales and marketing rep company in the in US of Canada. Today, I will be your co-host, and in a few more seconds, I will introduce you with our guest, Pablo Arosa. Everything you are viewing right now on your screen is about the Margin Destinations portfolio. We have the pleasure of representing cool companies in cool places, mainly focused in three big areas, such as Africa, where we are proud of representing Kelly and Peacock Safaris, Edwana Collection, and Sky Safari, all those doing Kenya and Tanzania. In Central and South America, we have Terra Nova Tours in Costa Rica, then the Guyana Tourism Authority, Cruz Andino, the famous lake crossing in Patagonia, Jungle Experiences on the Peruvian Amazon, Grand Patagas in Argentina and Uruguay, and Motorola Service and a Fantastico Sur in Torres of Paine National Park. Finally, our portfolio is completed with the Polar Products, Adventure Canada, Iceland Resources, and Iceland Pro Travel. Please, if you have any questions, if you have a brochure request for this digital material, Feel free to reach out to me after the webinar. You can see my email address at the bottom of your screen now. Before starting with the webinar, I would love to give you a few housekeeping notes to go over for go to webinar. All attendees will be mute and this webinar is being recorded. So if you have to answer the phone or need to do a break, don't worry about that. We will be sending you the playback later by email. We will also upload this recording on our new YouTube channel, Emerging Destinations. We encourage you sending any questions. You can do that on the Go to Webinar control panel on your right. Pablo Raja from Otorla Torres and myself, we will be answering that either at the end of the presentation or by email at the end of the day. So let's start with our webinar. Please help me welcome Mr. Pablo Araja, uh, Sales Manager for Coachella Torres and Fantastico Sur. So thank you very much, Anna. Um, and hello, everyone. Thank you for your presence today with us at this webinar. We are going to talk a little bit about some great reasons uh, why Torres of Paine is worth to travel to. Um, probably some of them are going to be familiar to you. Um, some others will, will be new stuff for you to know. So, well, let's start, of course, there's always a reason to travel to Torres of Paine when you look at that view, right? and uh, views are all around the place all around the park it's really a stunning place let me introduce myself a little shortly this is me my name is pablo uh, Pablo Araya. i have been working in the in the tourism industry for more than 18 years already so that's why i look already a little bit old not that much but a little bit and this is probably the the more the, the only time you will see me with a with a, a t-shirt and so serious. But normally this is the way you're going to see me traveling all around, and especially when I'm going to Torres Paine. These are my two um, kids. I have a, another a daughter as well, but this is the way I dress normally. And um, well we are working in the, in the adventure industry so uh, we sell trekking tours you know puma observations and other stuff so this is the way you're going to see me normally and um, i've been working for 18 years in the industry and for the last 
seven years of my life, eight years already, sorry, I have been working for Hotel Las Torres, and I'm very happy to work in such a beautiful location, of course. I'm, I'm of course, I'm, I'm based in Santiago, but I work a week of every month in that beautiful place. So we're going to talk about reasons to come to Torres del Paine. And the first reason to me, and to for many actually, is that Torres del Paine is the very end of the world. Meaning this, that you have to fly to Chile's southernmost airport, which is Punta Arenas. Um, there are several, um, several airlines traveling to Punta Arenas. The, three big Chilean ones, which are LATAM, um, Sky Airlines, and JetSmart. Every day, there are around 10 flights in high season, sometimes even more, sometimes a little bit less. And, and it's, as I, as I was telling you, it's the last Chilean city in Patagonia. After that, you can only find a small town in uh, Tierra del Fuego, but this is the last big city in Patagonia. Um, Punta Arena is located on the shore of the Strait of Magellan, which is another good reason itself, especially now that uh, after the 500 years of uh, discovery of the Strait, uh, it's a beautiful place, the Strait of Magellan. You can see the penguins, whales, and well, it's the, it's the last crossing to get to Tierra del Fuego. Mm -hmm. Now, this is very important since one of the first um, or one of, the, of our best partners to uh, we work with in the area is Cruceros Australis. So many of our guests, they come with Cruceros, they, um, they get to Punta Arenas and we pick them up from the, from the pier and then we drive to Torres del Paine. Um, Punta Arenas, I was telling you, is the last city, but it's still very well connected by air. Just a direct flight from Santiago, three hours, three hours, 10 minutes, three hours, 15 minutes, more or less. Um, there are daily flights as well from Puerto Montt and some other couple of connections from other main cities in Chile. Um, so it's the very end of the world, but it's still very well connected. Now, getting to Punta Arenas, it's one of the best uh, place you can ever take. This is the great channel, the great glacier, and it's one of the views you can get from the airplane when you are flying to Punta Arenas. Now, apart from the from the glacier, you see a lot of other things like volcanoes, active volcanoes. I mean, um, the the southern ice field, the northern ice field. It's really a beautiful flight. So every time you go to Punta Arenas, please take your camera on board as you will take many, many pictures and videos probably as I still do after many years working in the area. So Punta Arenas is one of the options. When we get to Punta Arenas, then we have a five hours drive to Torres del Paine. And when we do that drive from Punta Arenas, we do a stop at a local ranch, which is called Estancia Cerro Negro, where we do uh, a chip touring, uh, um, an exhibition of the chip touring process there, um, and as well as an asado, a barbecue. So this is a great point to stop. Mm -hmm. And please be aware, Patagonia, for those who don't know, is Chile's most important destination, tourist destination, absolutely. Uh, it's not the most visited one, but in terms of the marketing it provides to the country, it's huge. Um, so Torres del Paine is well connected, not only with Punta Arenas, but with Calafate as well. We have actually daily, um, daily transfers between Calafate and the park, which are operated by us. And, um, and well, I was telling you already about the option as well to uh, combine Hotel Las Torres with Cruceros Australis. Torres del Paine. Torres del Paine is widely known because of this mountain. So we, we talk about 
majestic mountains in the area. And it's, it's not probably, I mean, I'm sure it is one of the most iconic mountain landscapes in the world, no doubts. Everyone is coming to Torres de Paine to see at these beautiful um, mountains, especially the two ones which are the popular ones, the Cuernos del Paine and the Towers, right? According to National Geographic, this is one of the most spectacular sites that a human being can imagine. So even me, I've been there many, many times. I go there, as I was telling you, once a month, and I still go every time with my camera in my hands. There are always different lights to see uh, or to take photos. Mountains are sometimes snow, sometimes they're not, sometimes they're, it's nice sun or animals where you, so you can combine uh, different landscapes with fauna uh, photography. These are the Cuenas del Paine. This is when you get more deep in the park. Uh, of course, the National Park is not only known for the mountains, but as well because of all the trekking or hiking options that you can get there. Once again, the Cuernos. This is autumn time already, a little bit snowed. And the famous Torres del Paine, or the towers, where you need to walk a nine hours uh, day. It's, it's five, day, five hours uphill and then four hours downhill, but the views in this place are simply amazing, beautiful. And this is autumn time, autumn time where wind is away. The windy season in Torres del Paine is normally between November and February. So to be honest, you would never get that kind of photos in summertime, in our summertime. This is autumn time where wind stops a little bit and early morning, of course. But what I want to mention or to say you is this is a really place, nature, nature place to take photos, to enjoy, to discover dramatic sceneries. It is actually a dream for many people coming to Torres Paine. When I go to the shows around the world, everyone comes to my booth and sometimes they just see the photos and it's, it's, uh, it's really nice to feel how they uh, are amazed by these beautiful landscapes. Well, Torres del Paine, is a very unspoiled and rough destination, apart from being remote. Um, few people lives in the area, actually, less than one person each uh, square kilometer. There are only two cities in all this huge area, Punta Arenas, which is five hours away, and then Puerto Natales, which is two hours away. So if you go in the low season, which can be April or October, you would even not see many people in the park. The park receives in a year 300,000 visitors, which is not that much for such a big park, okay? Uh, so it's a place where you can see really wild animals uh, like this. Um, oof, sorry, I just forgot the name of that. Uh, but you can see pumas, you can see foxes, condors, flamingos, a wide variety of wild animals in this habitat. These are some guanacos hmm, with the Paine Mountains behind. Beautiful forest. Um, Lenga is, uh, is that uh, forest. Turquoise colored rivers and, and lagoons and lakes. And just for you to understand that time when I went the last time with my kids, we were sitting at the, at the restaurant and suddenly a puma appeared. This is a photo taken with a, with a mobile phone, not by me, by another person. Uh, but the puma was right there lying on the grass. He stayed there for some 20 minutes and then he left. And this is what I wanted to, make, to, to, to take you with the with being unspoiled and rough. I mean, pumas, they live free around the area. There are many, uh, and not 
as, as, as many other kind of animals as well, of course. About the cultural heritage, impressive fashion cultures lived in the, in the area, like the Sednams, the Iranes. And in Torres del Paine, there's not um, many, um, there are not many sites where you can see that, but we do an activity where we visit a cave with some repression paintings. And, but nowadays the gaucho, the horses and the mate is something that you can really feel, you can get, you can talk with the gauchos, you can take horse, horseback ridings. We can teach you about the mate culture and what all this means. Well, of course, sorry, of course the, the slow roasted lamb barbecue is part of the culture, right? So this is a cave which is, uh, is included, the visit in one of our hiking tours that we do. This is a half day hiking tour, which is a beautiful activity where we visit these paintings. But you face all the time when you're walking the massive behind. So um, you combine both in this case, the cultural activity with the sightseeing uh, and the hiking tour. Regarding the gauchos, at the hotel, there are around 15 gauchos working in the property. And the reason why is because um, we own some 300 horses at the, at the property. Uh, since we, we do not only horseback ride, uh, riding activities for the hotel, but as well for other hotels in the area. And we, with the horses, we take um, staffs to the most remote areas of the park. So we work with the horses and the gauchos are the guys that they take care of these 300 horses. So uh, this is a beautiful option when you go to Torres del Paine to stay with us and to chat with the gauchos. These are real gauchos, by the way. These are not just someone like me dressed as a gaucho. Um, and the relation they have with the horses is something beautiful. I mean, it's, it's like a horse for us in, in other places of the world. They are with the horses all day. They love the horses. They take really care of them. The slow roasted lamb barbecue, of course, is part of the restaurant, of one of the restaurant options we have. Uh, we have a quinto, which is a barbecue behind the restaurant. And tasting a, a, um, a lamb, a Patagonia lamb, is something really, really unique. And well, the ultimate adventure. And um, when we talk about Torres del Paine, Nowadays, a lot of people not only think about the mountains, but they think about one of the most uh, popular hiking tours in the world, trekking tours, which is the W circuit. The W circuit is a five days, four nights trekking circuit that mm, can be operated by us staying at the property and going every day to each of the, of the, every of the, of the valleys of the circuit, right? So, Instead of staying in a tent, you can do the day adventure coming back to the hotel. And well, as I was telling you already, Patagonia is one of South America's most important destinations, no doubts. There's a pine in Patagonia is really a place of stunning views, beautiful landscapes, some very unique, um, some very unique, um, uh, oops, destinations like this great, this glacier, the great glacier that I show you on a photo from, on a video from the plane. This can be seen when you go and stay with us. You can walk to the glacier, you can navigate to the glacier, and it's a beautiful one. Of course, the horseback riding activities that I told you before. And for me, well, I love to do horseback riding, of course, but doing a horseback ride in terms of pine is something different. I mean, there is no, as I was telling you already, there is no one in the area. So you can just go and relax with your horse. They are very friendly horses, very easy horses. And our horseback riders, horseback rides, they're always guided by a gaucho and a guide, okay? Of course, helmets included. Torres del Paine is as well 
a great place to do photo tours. Uh, so this is a famous Brazilian photographer that he came with us. And you can take some beautiful ones like this one of the Salto Grande. Again, the one of the Puma. And well, all of this can be, uh, all of this adventure can be done with us, with the Las Torres. Um, Torres del Paine is with, after all this um, pandemic, the COVID-19, is still one of the best places on earth for a relaxing and coffee vacation. Um, so we invite you to discover the reason why it's now as one of the most beautiful places on the planet, as well as some useful tips like when, when is the best time to visit the park, the activities, excursions you can do while you're there. This is the hotel, Las Torres, okay? These are some sites from the hotel on a sunny day. The hotel, if you see, reminds of, a, well, actually, this was an old ranch, an old estancia. Uh, which was converted into a hotel 20, 25, 26 years already. So the hotel is a Forza property, which still has some uh, influence of the original ranch. This is a view from the hotel with the, with the hill behind. And what you see behind is, for example, an organic garden that is from the original, original ranch. The hotel has 60, Six, 76 rooms, sorry. And just for you to know, this is what we, uh, we, are, we have already our own protocol regarding the COVID. Uh, we actually, we sent already on uh, a newsletter with all this information, but we're still working or waiting for the government's measures um, to send you a new one with more details. But basically, we are implementing a training program for all our staff for this next season with personal protective equipment. We are reinforcing cleaning, disinfectation, sanitation protocols. This will be applied in all public services, in all public areas, and using latest technology. We will have hand sanitizer dispensers. This will be available. And we are defining an appropriate safety distance for our operations, meaning this on our buses or vans and as well in our restaurants and bars. Uh, Self-service station will be eliminated, meaning this, the buffet breakfast, for example. And we will request payments for services by car or other electric devices to secure the less uh, or the touchless, the, the, the best we can. And the concept of biosecurity has been incorporated in order to guarantee that the ecological maintenance of the reserva and its organic garden is efficiently preserved, right? So, but I want you to know that we are working on this. We will, we will be a safe destination. We are a safe destination. Some of the rooms of the hotel. The hotel, as I was telling you, is a foster property. Rooms are simple and cozy, all of them with beautiful views to, to the surroundings. Mm -hmm. Some of the rooms do have views to the mountains, some of others to the, to the Pampa or to the valley. But all of them do have beautiful room, uh, views. This is the suite room, which is the, big, the biggest one. We have a complete new band, band fleet, right? Um, with some really, really comfortable seats. And this is the organic garden that I was telling you. So a lot of our preparations are based off organic stuff from the garden, from our own garden. I'm talking about cucumbers, tomatoes, sables, um, lettuces. Um, and so uh, probably, 35 to 40% of our preparations are based on garden stuff, even some liquors or some uh, drinks. Mm -hmm. We have an, an organic bar, which is widely known in our country at least. So you can get some fresh salad every day on your table. 
which really makes a difference. So thank you for your time. This was uh, Hotel Las Torres in Patagonia. Um, I guess you you have some some questions, Anna. Thank you so much, Pablo, for your presentation. Uh, yes, now uh, we are going to answer a few questions that some of you have been typing on the control panel. The first one is, um, can you repeat when is the windy season and when is the best time to go? Yeah, this is a very good question. Well, the windy season is between November and February, which is actually the most crowded season. So just as an example, when my friends ask me when to go to Torre del Paine, I always tell them low season, um, September, October, or April, March. April is my favorite month in the, in the park, absolutely. It's when the mountains are already a little bit snowed, and there is less people, so it's easier to see wild animals. And well, and it's less windy, of course. So for me, April is the perfect option to go to Torres del Paine. And by the way, airfares and uh, hotel rates are lower. Okay, great. Then we do have another one. Um, let me see. What is the maximum weight of a guest for a horseback riding? Wow, it's a good question, but I don't have the the weight honestly. But I can find out. Now we have big horses and we have some smaller ones, but um, I think it's the first time I'm, I'm asking about that. So I okay. can I can get I can get the the specific um, weight. Yeah. No worries. We will send the answer to Greg on the follow up email. No worries. Mm -hmm. um, then, well, I have another one. When do you expect Chile to open to international entry and travel? I'm expecting to be this in September. Okay, so your season this year will start November the 1st, so you, it everything will be okay. Yeah, actually, we're starting in November the 1st because we are in this moment in the process of buying some... Uh, some cleaning, uh, some air cleaning uh, machines, and some many stuff that are have not been easy to to get in the international markets. So we have a window of one and a half months, more or less. This is the reason why we are opening in November. Only that. Okay. And any idea if the government will ask for a quarantine upon entry? right now or you mean for for the season uh well as soon as the borders are open most probably in september have you heard anything not yet honestly no okay um we have well, another I, I, question by, by the way no. yes uh, some international um, airlines they are already announced that they are going to start in in the next months okay so the first of november is what i think that should be secure uh, a secure date but some ones as klm or emirates they already informed that they're going to operate some of them in july some others in august but we still need the confirmation of the government to when the borders will be opened and Internal flights, they already started again. Okay, so LATAM, JetSmart, and Sky Airlines, the three of them, they are the, uh, flying again in Chile. Great. Uh, regarding flights, I have a question regarding that. Can you fly into Puerto Natales or El Calafate? Great question. Yeah, you can fly to Puerto Natales. Actually, less season was yeah it was the first season where we had uh, puerto natales open as a regular uh, daily airport in the past or two years ago it started but with some two weeks two uh, two flights every week something not very uh, not very much really but last season 
the flight to Puerto Natales was already like finally a regular option. And I, I've seen already uh, LATAM's announces to fly back to Puerto Natales. Great, and I can share my experience with the audience. Last year when I was there in April, um, I flew into Punta Arenas airport. So when I arrived to Chile, we stopped at Cerro Negro at the ranch and then we went to the hotel. And on my way back, um, I flew through El Calafate. So you can also, as, as you always include the transfer in and out, you can also combine two different airports, one on your arrival and another one on your departure. Yeah, I forgot to mention that about Calafate, you're right. Yeah, Calafate is on the Argentinian side. And we don't include the transportation to the airport, but uh, or from the airport, just from the city, okay? Uh, and it's an international airport, so this is a good option, but it's always worth to stay a night in Calafate and visiting the Perito Moreno anyway. Great. Is there a minimum age to ride horses alone? We don't have minimum age because when children are too small, they can ride with their fathers, as I I did. Okay. Now, my six years old boy, he started at five riding with a his with a very easy horses, and they did. Yeah. Great. And do you request for a minimum number of nights during Christmas or New Year? Yeah, there's a there's a per period between December the 23 and January the 3rd where the minimum of three nights is requested and only all inclusive during this period. Okay, great. So, uh, as I mentioned before at the beginning of the webinar, before the end of this week, we will be sending everybody a follow-up email with the recording. The playback will be also available soon on our new YouTube channel, Emerging Destinations, as well as on our website. Um, this is all for today's webinar, Five Reasons to Travel to Torres del Paine. Thank you, Pablo, for your time and for joining us this beautiful place in uh, Patagonia. We really appreciate your time and connection with us today. And again, if we can help or assist you in any way, we will be happy to do that. Remember, my email address is anna, A -N -A, at emergingdestinations.com. I hope all of you have a wonderful afternoon and we look forward to having your clients soon in Torres Alpine National Park. Thank you. Bye-bye.